Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day today. Today let's take a look at the Wii Mini. Is it the best affordable streamer you can buy today? What are you girls doing? We're playing hockey! Let me see that. <laughs> let's kick it off with the obvious right now. It's cheap and it's often on sale. When I filmed this, it was $89, but it appears to bounce between $79 in rare occasions and up to $99. Don't even bother comparing other streamers at this price point, because they simply won't match up on the features offered here. Instead for comparisons today, we will compare against more premium options such as the new Blue Sound Node and the Audio Lab 6000N. So what does this little hockey puck offer? Well, for one it offers high res audio, supporting up to 192.24 supports most of the top streaming services, and continues to add more through updates. Voice control with Siri and Alexa if you're into that kind of thing. Multi-room audio, group it with other devices and enjoy a synchronized audio experience. Even automation, sleep timer, or wake alarm. Add it to your Alexa wake up routine. Please subscribe, please subscribe. Well, that was weird. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, as for the software, this is an important one. And my first comparison. If your streaming software isn't reliable and simple to use, you likely won't use it nearly as often. When I fire up my AudioLab 6000N, for example, for one, it takes a couple minutes before I can even connect to it. Once connected, I'm greeted with PlayFi, which can leave a lot to be desired. It tends to be a bit more clunky and slow. While they continue to work on updates, and I do appreciate that, they still have a ways to go on that one. The Blue Sound node has Blue OS. It's a competent piece of software. It's pretty simple to use, reliable, better than PlayFi without a doubt. Is it really better than the software on this little budget Weem though? I could argue the Weem mini streaming software is on par with Blue Sound. It's simple to use, it's easy, and it's fast. Has almost all the goods such as Tidal Connect, Amazon Ultra HD streaming, and a Spotify app. It may not be quite as cosmetically clean in comparison to Blue OS, but that's really my only knock here. The area it actually beats Blue OS and PlayFi is the support and updates. Weem support is really on the ball with this product. I think they know they have a winner here. They're active in online forums, they respond to software requests and inquiries, and are very helpful in general with any support questions. They update more frequently than their com competition as well. In just the recent past, they've added gapless playback, Amazon Ultra HD support, bitrate display for Tidal Connect, multi-room Tidal Master, along with many, many other small improvements. A recent update that's really interesting and not offered by the others is a 10-band EQ, and it's fully customizable. So now we have a sub $100 streamer that offers HD streaming, AirPlay 2, Bluetooth, automation, as well as some of the best support offered that I've ran into. Now let's take a look at the exterior. The Weem is made from a very glossy plastic. It has touch sensitive controls on the top for volume, play, and pause, with an LED indicator for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and other status notifications. All the connections are in the rear on this device, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary analog input and output, optical digital output, and a USB type C for the power adapter. We won't find an ethernet port here. The Weem Mini only offers dual band Wi-Fi. Although a pro version is in the works that sounds like it'll have it included. Now onto some out of the box limitations. The DAC included is not great. I will suggest an external DAC in all cases. This is a sub $100 streamer, so expectations should be set for out of the box performance. If you add an external DAC, such as a Ship Modi or a Topping D30, you will still keep this very budget friendly and it will compete head to head or beat, depending on what you pair it with, the Blue Sound. The Node and 6000N both have decent DACs that can stand on their own two feet. Uh, this is something to keep in mind. If you want to keep things simple and avoid separates, you may need to spend a bit more. But if you're comfortable with separates, it can really reward you with the customizations you can come up with, as well as always having an upgrade path. The setup with the Wii Mini is simple. In fact, let's just do it right now and see how long it takes. I just did a factory reset. Okay, first things first, we're going to open up the Wii Map. Searching for device, it pops up really quick. Looks like now it's connecting to our Wi-Fi. It says this could take up to a minute. I doubt it'll take that long. For our network, we have three of the Eero 
Amazon Eero is spread throughout the house. This should be pretty quick. There we go, connected to Wi-Fi. Checking for firmware updates, nothing there. This is where you can rename the product. So we will put this as Office. Next. Okay, control your speaker with Alexa. This will require us to sign into Amazon. Okay. Typo. All right, sign in. Okay, allow access. Select your language for Alexa, and it just gives you some specific instructions. This is where you can set an audio delay uh, for the latency. We can do this quick just to show you. It only takes a second. We won't hear anything right now because it's uh, connected in a different room. That's complete. Okay, so we're actually up and running right now. So some things I would suggest to do right away, go into this gear wheel here. And uh, for one, I guess this is where you can see the EQ that we talked about earlier. You can change this up or go into the presets. Audio settings. Myself, I need to use fixed volume output and this is where we'll set the resolution, so 192.24. Select play, play test audio. Yes, okay, we're good there. And now lastly, you wanna check your audio output. And I am using the optical, so that is connected. And just like that, we're all set. Now for the conclusion. Some final thoughts on this little streamer. As for the pros, we have BitPerfect streaming up to 24192. We have frequent updates. The price can't be beat. Compatibility between services. And now onto the cons. The only thing I can really knock is no ethernet port and the internal DAC. But that's kind of what I would expect at this price point. And the ethernet port is gonna be added in the pro version, but that'll come at a higher price point as well. I have no issue suggesting this is a buy. I watched a number of reviews prior to this and needed to test it out for myself. It works, and it works really well. It may be one of my favorite budget audio buys, right alongside the IEMA A07, as far as value goes. Well, that's all I really have for you today, so thanks for your time. I appreciate you guys. Later.